Today we're going to talk about the four ways of hit confirming. First let's start with the more obvious ones which are going to be visual. Visually you can see a difference in the animation and reaction of a character on hit versus on block. You can see that Ken sort of holds block here, he blocks her attack, there's a blue thing, but on hit he reels back and he sort of throws himself uh, you know, backwards. However, a more obvious sign that a lot of people use, including myself, is looking for this spark that shows when you hit. See that spark right there? It's almost like a muzzle flash in a shooting game. Now go ahead and close your eyes. Could you tell which ones were hits and which ones were blocks? There's a very distinct sound difference between a block and a hit, and this is another design aspect that you can use to separate a hit from a block. The reason I don't really use this as much is because the locals I used to go to, we didn't really have headsets and we didn't really rely on sound. It was more of a visual thing. However, with everybody at home, I think that you have better access to the sound of your game. Now for some less obvious methods of hit confirming. The health bar. For this section, let's take a look at the enemy health bar. Sometimes when people press a button, they look to this bar for confirmation as the opponent will either gain gray life or lose HP noted by the red portion. When the player visually confirms that the opponent has lost HP, they can capitalize on their confirmed hit. Stun meter. If your game has a stun bar or a similar mechanic, you can also look to see if the opponent's stun bar has gone up after pressing a button to confirm a hit. Anyways, that's it for today everyone. If you learned something, please consider subscribing, and I'll talk to you next time.